morning. How are you? It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful day. Um, it's Tuesday. I'm really excited about today's workout. Today's workout is obviously a similar. Let me move this up a little bit. This was my Christmas chair that I had here. It's a little heavier. Good morning, Rosa. Great to see you here. I have an announcement today. Um, I do have an announcement today. But today's a beautiful day. It's Tuesday. It's freezing cold out here. The temperature dropped crazy yesterday. And when I say crazy, this is California. So no disrespect to the East Coast. It uh, actually got down this morning. Uh, it got down into the 20s um, out in the canyons. It was really cold. But so excited to uh, be up and going and feeling fresh. Um, got a long day ahead today, which is pretty exciting because it means we're getting stuff done. And uh, always having goals and objectives are so important. Uh, good morning, Ginny. There she is, my Ginny. Nice to see you here. Uh, hi, Rosa. You said that again. I got a little announcement to make. Um, Pat Gross, great to see you here. Pat, always autumn. Both of you, always great to have you here. Uh, Shirlene, haven't seen you in a little while. Hope you're doing great. Um, and it's good to see you back here watching. Hopefully you're joining in, but if not, I know you're working on it. I love seeing the uh, messages that you leave on uh, Facebook and everything. So thanks so much for that. Autumn, good morning. Pat, good morning. Ildi, uh, Ildi, did you put your wheels on this morning? I hope you had those. Uh, Ildi came up with this new thing. She's going to start putting roller skates underneath her 60 up balance board. I wouldn't recommend it, but Ildi's a powerhouse and she's going to go down that big hill. Um, that she sent me a picture of, right, Ildi? <laughs> uh, hi, Shirley. Good to see you. Betsy, great to see you here as well. Uh, so excited for today's workout. Today's workout, as we know, is simple, right? It's a terrific Tuesday. Um, I go back to basics and I have some new things to do today off of comments that I've received, phone calls that I've taken, customer service feedback. Um, but it's something new. And as you know, um, as you know, I... Uh, Always like to try and come up with something new, fresh, challenging. Even if it feels simple, but it's new, the brain is having to work to um, make sure that something new is able to be done. And so that's why it doesn't matter how hard it is. If it's something that's new, then just go ahead and uh, take the challenge. Um, Shirley, and you're on vacation this week, so you're able to join live. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Um, and uh, that's the beauty, I guess, of the holiday season is we get to do things that normally restrictions don't allow us to do. So thanks so much for being here. Bob, good morning, Bob. Great to see you here. Hope you and Ben had a fantastic and the rest of your family had a fantastic holiday season, Christmas. And uh, we've got the new year coming up. But I don't care about the new year. I care about the new you. And um, as much as I care about the new year, I'm interested in, in uh, every second being life changing, not because of a calendar day itself, although it's fun. Uh, Amy, good morning. Great to see you here as well, always. Um, Amy, I think that, that picture has you with a mask on. I hope you're staying safe. And uh, as things begin to change, I'm 100% I'm believe that we're going to be living a better life in 2021 without the restrictions we've had to face in 2020. So I'm excited as well for that. Chad, hello from Austin. Um, love Austin. I uh, was out in San Antonio last year. Uh, had a fantastic time out there. Love Texas. Uh, Vicky, catch you later as usual, but you're watching. That's great, Vicky. Hope you're doing great. I love the messages. I see what you leave for Debbie and for Kathy and how great their workouts are as well. So um, always appreciate all your positive energy and that you're making such a difference as well. Deborah, good morning, Deborah. Great to see you here as well. Looks like you're out on the boat or the ocean or something. I can see something nice in the back out there in your pictures. So <laughs> amazing that you're on time. Good morning. Either you're on time or I'm running a little late, one or the other. Um, Denise in Arizona. Uh, I'm heading to Arizona, I think, uh, the end of this week. I've got to go down there uh, for a couple of days, Saturday, Sunday. So I'll be closer to you, Denise, than I am today. Um, hopefully it's not too cold. I've looked at the weather temperature and during the days I'm hoping to uh, be able to get outside a little bit. Um, Joanne, Santa Rosa. Love Santa Rosa. That's up in uh, towards Northern California. Beautiful place up there. So thanks so much as well. And Beth, great to see you here. Like I said, today's going to be a simple workout. We go back to basics. If it, you find that it, you're more advanced than this, don't worry. Try and be perfect. Try and do everything exactly as it should be. I've got a bunch of exercises in here 
um, finishing with a little cardio. But again, this goes back to our basic Tuesdays. Terrific basic Tuesdays. Terrific Tuesday. Um, I'm rattling on. Okay, so uh, two things. Um, some of you may have realized, some of you may have seen messages on here, but um, my mum has secretly been on here and I kept it kind of private. But for anyone out there that uh, knows Rosa in here, we spoke the other day and, and she always wanted to try and kind of stay anonymous. She's a little bit um, private, but uh, I came to the decision and she agreed that for those of you that um, know Rosa that's in here, Dr. Rosa Hubbard Ford, that is my mother. So instead of having to say hi, Rosa, I can say hi, mum. Um, and send her my love as well, instead of kind of keeping this wall. There's no wall specifically. Uh, I know my mum works so much as well. So um, that's so funny. It reminded me because hi from Santa Rosa. Well, my mum was always Santa and her name's Rosa. So I guess Santa Rosa is my mum. Anyway, around the Christmas time. Uh, Beth, great to see you here as well. So I'm going to jump on and hi, mum, love you. She's over in England. Um, the, uh, my message for today, because I always have a message that I like to start with or normally have a message. And so I was thinking a lot, there you go, Tammy. Hey, Tammy, great to see you from the East Coast. Tammy, it was great. She went swimming in her swimming pool yesterday. She actually had to cut the ice out and go underneath and then find the hole, but she's practicing for her Eskimo days because she's heading off to Alaska, from what I understand, to go uh, ice fishing. So good luck, Tammy. Um, always great to see you here. And Beth, there you go with a big smile. Um, so my message for today, uh, I was thinking, when we first started talking and um, people would always say, I just want to have hope. I just want to have hope. And I used to think that I wanted to bring hope. And this is my message um, for today. I no longer want to give hope because hope tends to rely on somebody else's actions. I hope this gets better. I hope it's almost like you're sitting back and waiting. And I know when someone gives you hope, it's because you... Um, think that something's going to change. But I want to change that. Instead of giving hope, I want to give belief. Because I really believe when you believe in something, the chances are you're going to take action. When you hope, you have the chance to sit back and wait for somebody else to bring the end result. So I'm changing my message. I don't want to bring you hope. I want to bring you belief. But the belief I'm going to bring is in multifaceted uh, directions. I want you to believe in the 60 up because I've seen and know, and so many of you have, have felt the incremental, small to unbelievable changes in you. I also want you to believe that life can and will get better if you focus on the things that you want to do. I don't want you to hope it gets better. I want you to believe. But most importantly, I want you to believe in you. And the reason I want you to believe in you is you have so much more power. When you look back on your life and look at the things that you didn't take um, action on because you doubted yourself, and yet later on you found out how powerful you were and are, because we continue to, to evolve wisdom. I was talking to a lady yesterday on the phone. Um, you know, our wisdom is so critical to powerful actions. And so I really want you to believe in you, because if you have belief in you, and you have belief in a better tomorrow, and then with the balanced situation and fitness, you believe in the 60 up, then you're gonna take action and you're gonna see the results. So my message today, I'm gonna to remove hope and I'm gonna bring belief because with belief, everything is in your power. So that's it. Uh, Jill, he said, hi, mum, hi, Dan, great to see you, Jill. Tammy, it's 33. Uh, no, I was 33 two years ago, but thanks a lot for bringing it up. You're a little late on my birthday. Uh, Rosa, proud to have you as my mum always. Thanks so much. Pam, great to see you here as well. Um, and Vicky, you do believe, I know you believe, Vicky, because you're in here and you're doing this and later on in the days and you commit. And commitment is because you believe, not because you hope. I still think hope has a great place, but I would prefer it with belief. Um, Ildi, great to see you here. Thanks so much for showing up. I know you were watching a little earlier because we were joking earlier, but I just see you come up. And then Autumn, you're here as well. So with that being said, let me go ahead here. We're going to step this up and time. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. This is the little timer that I have, but the battery's going out and I can't really see what's going on. So with that being said, let's ignore that. Let's get on with the workout. All right, if you notice today, I've got the metal poles in. The reason I bought the metal poles in today is I know there's a lot of people out there 
that see the videos with the yellow poles and yet still use the metal poles. Um, the metal poles are there totally, completely for extra strength, extra safety. The destination is to get to the yellow poles. You want to have those. The yellow poles flex and that allows your legs or, or creates more of a connection from your feet to your brain. But the metal poles I created because I was working with people that were um, stroke survivors that only had one side of their body working. So they had to have metal poles to hold as they progressed. And we had incredible results with them as well. If you have metal poles and you want to go to the yellow, try it with changing just one pole at a time. So I take one metal pole out, put one yellow, so you have the confidence of the metal and feel the flex of the yellow. And then over time, you can change them both. Now, one thing I would say in there is if you take out the metal on your left and put it there, before you change to all yellow, put the left one back in and put the flex on the right so you get used to feeling on both sides. With that said, let's start. Are you ready? Here we go. Just start with a nice easy leg lift in here. It's funny, when I get talking and I start thinking about safety and helping people, you'll notice that I tend to talk quite a bit. Um, but again, there's so much knowledge and information that, um, that is critical to helping people gain confidence and with confidence you then gain success. Okay, what I want you to do, and this is a new little exercise, I want you to push the board to the right, feel it on the ground, and then tap behind the number one and back. Now push the board to the left, feel it touch the ground, and tap the board, I mean tap behind the number one. So push, tap, down. Push, tap, down. Now the reason I'm doing this exercise there's two reasons. One, some people are having a hard time with the tapping and keeping the board centered. They begin to feel off balance. So this gives you the freedom of having the uh, board on the ground and learning just to lift a leg and tap. Now, the other reason that I'm doing this is a lot of us that are used to just keeping the board in the middle, now we're having to learn to tap with our body weight slightly shifting through our arms. So you'll notice I'm beginning to feel a little bit um, my bo upper body is twisting slightly, but I'm still staying, se staying centered on my feet. There you go, good. Now we're gonna change this up. I want you to lean the board till it touches the ground and then pull it back just slightly so it could actually wobble. Now come and tap the one. Now touch the ground, pull it back slightly, tap the one. Tap the ground, pull it back slightly, and you'll notice it's still leaning more right now to the left. Now it's off the ground, it's leaning more to the right. But because we're doing this, it gives the freedom of keeping the board balanced. But at the same time, my body weight is still slightly, because of my arm twist, not centered. This would challenge your sense of balance on the, uh, on the leg that's staying on the ground. Good, so I just pull it back. So I actually let it hit the ground, pull it back, and then tap but I'm not pulling it all the way back to center, just slightly off so that forces my arms to stay slightly crossed over. Last one, there, back, tap one, good. Now, come to the middle. For those of you that want to, hold on with your hands. For those of you that are more confident, hold with, the top of, with your thumbs on the top and just start giving me taps. There you go, so now we've gone from a progression of the board being on the ground and feeling safe to the next progression of being slightly crossed over, but still close to the ground. And the last one is, can we now lift and tap without having to worry about the board rocking side to side because my strength and my awareness of my balance pressure points on the foot on the ground is now totally centered. Good, and for those of you that want the next challenge, take your hands off and see if you can soft tap but don't let the board rock to the side. So it's a really soft tap. So pick the one that works for you. And you'll notice if you're doing the one where the board is, um, where you're not holding on, you'll notice how solid and safe you feel on the leg. We're gonna go two more, one more, and bring it back down. Good. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna push the board to the side, Step on number two and go up on your toe and back. Here we go, we're gonna go again to the right side. Are you ready? So, put the board touches the ground, we go up, we step back. Push the board to the ground, we're on two and two. 
So it's just like I'm stepping up, but now I'm strengthening my foot. Now, for some of those uh, of you that have said you have a hard time going up on your toe, what I want you to do is try and allow your body to push down on the poles to try and help lift that body weight. So if you notice, if, if you need to hold on to the poles because you want that safety, but if you feel strong, I put my palms on the top of the pole and that helps me push slightly to increase the strength in my toe by giving a little assist. Good. We're gonna go two more. And last one. There you go, good. And come back down to the ground. Now shake your legs out, nice and easy. And take your right foot, go up on your toe on the ground and just roll your knee out. We wanna loosen those ankles up as we're going. How are you doing today? It's so good to be with you. This is the last Tuesday workout of the year. I didn't even think of that until I just started thinking about it just now. Good, just rolling that foot out, feeling that stuff on us. And some of you, good, and roll the right one more time out again. Some of you have been with me for a long time on here and you've seen it right from the start where we got shut down for a while, couldn't get on changed legs and you're still with us here going into another year. And I love having you here. Every single one of you is really special. And I'm so happy to be able to be helping with the 60 up, shake those legs out. Okay, so what I want you to do now, we're gonna do a next exercise, which again is kind of a, a, a basic exercise, but adjusting our foot pressure. Let me show you one time. You're gonna step on three, step back, tap, step on two, step back, step on one, step back, then go to the middle and try and hold. That's the exercise. Now let me just explain why we're doing this. Every time you step a different width apart, there's a different pressure point in your feet, in your legs, in your core stabilization. So what we're doing is we're changing the, amount, the distance we step out. So I'm stepping over a puddle, I'm stepping just onto the next step, I'm doing a little shuffle to get around a stone in the street. So that's what we're working on, are you ready? Here we go, step on three and step back. Now step on two, step back, step on one, step back. Now put your foot in the middle, five seconds to find your balance. Four, three, two, one, and step back. Now left foot to three, here we go. Step three and down. Step two and down. Step one and down and step in the middle and hold. Now remember, for three, two, one, three is outside of the poles, two is just inside the pole, and one is really just a straight step forward. Here we go again. Step on three, step back. Step on two, step back. Step on one, step back. Now step in the middle, five seconds to find your balance. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go, left foot, are you ready? Step on three, step back, feel safe. Step on two, feel strong. Step on one, feel solid. Now right in the middle, step in the middle, head up, don't look down, three, two, one, step back. Now we're gonna change this one up a little bit. We're not gonna take the back foot off of the ground so we get used to stepping and having the strength to come back. Are you ready? So we step on three, and push back. Step on two, push back. Step on one, push back, but we still go to the middle and get that lift. Five, four, three, two, one, and step back. Remember, keep the back foot on the ground now, so it's like a lunge. We push, push back. Two, push, push back. One, push back. Now step in the middle, Step up, four, three, two, one. And we're going one last time through. Remember, keep the back foot on the ground. So feel your lunge, you're strong, you push back. Not stepping quite so far, I step back. Just on the one, you can check your foot position and push back. Now step in the middle, up you come. Five, four, three, two, one. Step back, last time through. Three, we're lunging, push back. Feel the strength in the leg when you push back and then feel how solid you feel on the leg when you, that you're pushing back two. One, 
And last one, step in the middle, up you go, find the balance, four, three, two, one, and step back. Good, for those of you that don't know that are relatively new here, the red shoe is my right foot, the blue shoe is my left foot, just if you get a little bit lost or wonder which foot I'm using, because it's mirror image, just know if I'm moving my right foot, it's the red shoe. Grab a quick drink of water. Who else jumped in? Um, thanks, hey, George is here. Great to see you, big George. Uh, Rosemary, lovely to see you here. I think this might be the first time that I've seen you here, but thanks so much for being here and watching. I hope that you're joining in. Beth, that made a big difference. Um, what made a big difference? I'm guessing it's one of the exercises. Maybe it was the tapping at the beginning because some people do have a hard time with the tapping. And Renee, great to see you here as well. Let's jump on next exercise. Again, nice and simple. Okay, what I want you to do is step on two and two. And all you're gonna do is just rock side to side. Now we're gonna do a little balance exercise. For some of you, you'll know that this is easy. And remember, if you're finding this really now comfortable and you feel like you've conquered it, make sure that you're on a surface that has the thinnest amount of carpet. So that's why I use the 60 up mat. People say it is really thin. It's thin on for a reason. It's because I wanna have as little cushion as possible, which allows the board to have the hardest challenge. So if you're on a carpet, I know my own mum back in England, I said my own mum, not my old mum, my own mum back in England. She went and got some of the uh, um, plastic um, covers or, or what are they called? Like a plastic mat, put that on there and then put the 60 up board in there and it suddenly got a lot tougher. Okay, good. Come and find your balance. And we're going to give you a little challenge in here today. What I want you to do, and look, I'm, I'm having to really focus on my pressure points. Run your fingers up and down the board and try and maintain that balance so you're having to multitask the brain and you know this one because I've done this one a lot. We're gonna do something different today which is gonna really challenge your balance. Good, and just rock side to side. Now this is an exercise I was talking with a lady yesterday about her husband. Great lady, had a wonderful conversation. And I said one of the best things she can do to her husband who had, had, a, had a brain tumor removed and was having a hard time with balance is to get on this and do this at night time watching TV. So you multitask the brain because you'll end up watching the TV and listening and forgetting you're rocking, but the brain is working the body because it has to have a connection to make it move. Now, come and find your balance again. When the commercials come on, or maybe every time a song starts, you say, I'm gonna try and find my balance, but you're still engaged in the movie, but your brain is working with your body to work on that balance connection. Good, start running your fingers. Now, if you notice, I'm going from little finger to top. Now go the other way, go top and down. So you have to take all your fingers on. So again, we're forcing the brain to have to reverse the process that feels most natural, but at the same time, you're still working on your balance. Good, and come back and rock side to side again. Again, this is specific balance training. The strength that you're gonna be gaining from this exercise is purely the fact that you're in an upright position, your shoulders should be back, your core should be flat or, or certainly you know, engaged. And so we've got a natural strengthening of body um, muscle connection through your natural body weight, which is what happens when you walk. Good, come and find your balance. We're gonna do something different now. This one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Okay, what I want you to do, if you feel safe, if you don't feel safe and you wanna keep both hands on, run your fingers. If you feel safe, take your right hand off and I want you to move it across in this way. You'll notice as you move how you have to adjust the pressure points in your feet. You know what's funny doing this exercise that I can see on the camera? I feel like I'm uh, Danny Zuko in Greece. Well, it's a wall, grease lightning, you're running up the quarter of a mile. Grease lightning, wall, grease light. Okay. Relax down, good, change, other side. Take the left hand up, take it across to the side, bring it back to the front, and take it off, and back to the front, and point to the side. Now, if you want to increase the intensity of this one, we're gonna try this one on the next one, then feel free, I'll show you how we're gonna do that one, and it really is a big challenge. But again, the great thing about a challenge is when you achieve it, even for a second, you've really, conquered 
a challenge that's all because of you. Rock side to side. It's not a challenge of how fast can I go in a car and you just got to get a faster car. It's not about, you know, how um, fast can I run on a treadmill because the treadmill's working with you. With the balance board, it's all about you. So any success you have is your own power, nothing to do with the board itself. The board just gives feedback as to what's happening. Now, this is the last challenge. Again, if you want to just hold on to both poles, run your fingers. If you wanna just go here and find that balance you can, this is the last challenge. You're gonna follow your finger and try and maintain that balance. So again, as my finger goes, my head turns, and you'll notice I'm wobbling a lot on here, but what I'm really doing is I'm really focusing on my pressure points and I'm adjusting relative to what's happening in my body. That is balance training. Balance training is not finding the middle and being perfect. Balance training is when you begin to change your pressure points, but you're able to constantly correct and come back to your middle without there ever being a problem. You don't even notice you're doing it because it's just natural. Okay, here we go. Left. I look to the left, I follow my finger, I come back. This is way harder than people would imagine it to be. We've got two to go. I'm just following my finger and letting my brain react to what's happening to my pressure points in here, back to the center, and bring it down. Great job. So what I want you to do now is just walk. We're gonna loosen those feet up. I could notice when I was doing that, how much strengthening my feet were going through because it's pressure point adjustments. So I had to place pressure on different parts of the feet to adjust the balance, not easy. Again, great little exercise and uh, certainly challenges the balance. And then when you set back on the ground, which we're gonna do in a second, good, push down with the left foot, step back with the right. Notice how solid the ground feels. Just bend those knees a little bit. Just march up and down and notice how solid you feel that ground. Take your hands off if you feel safe and just bend those knees. Feel how solid. Now a little side to side step. Notice how solid you feel because again, with the ground being solid and the board obviously having a rock to it, what was scary, which was the ground, now suddenly feels so safe. That confidence grows. All right, next one we're gonna step up onto. Go on two and two. Just rocking now. What we're going to work on here is a simple, it's a very simple exercise where it's two steps and then a third step is a balance. So we go from one foot to one foot to balance, one foot to one foot to balance on one foot. So do this with me. We go slow. Step on the right, step on the left. Now bring your right foot to the middle and balance. Three steps left foot, right foot middle and balance and right foot left foot middle and balance and left foot on number two right foot on number two just check your foot placement in the middle and then lift that right leg find the balance so we've got one two three balance and hold and one two, three, balance and hold. Now what we're working on here so specifically is the ability, let's go to walk, we're walking, stepping, and then suddenly we're strengthening one single leg. As I said before, when I would train Bob Eubanks, it was amazing how he could hold onto a wall and lift his leg with the wall support there and balance. Let's go again. But when I asked him to stand on one leg without the wall, he couldn't do it, there was no confidence there. So what we're working on here again is the ability to step, step, and build the strength in one leg, both strength of the ability of the leg to be able to hold the body weight, but also strengthening the connection of confidence because now you're feeling what's happening to your body. Here we go, two, two. When I say your body, I'm talking about the brain messaging and the foot telling the brain what's happening and the brain telling the foot what to do to adjust, it's, it's fascinating. Again, let's go one last time each side. This is how babies learn to walk. It's all about the connection of the brain, and last time on the left, all about the connection of the brain, learning those pressure points and sending messages back and forth until they learn to stand, then they learn to walk, then they learn to run, 
and we're good. Good, step back, here we go. Just rocking side to side, nice and easy. What I wanna do is get a quick drink of water, so push with the left foot, step back, grab your drink of water really quickly, and I'll just say hi. Uh, Jen, um, no, Beth, you apologized. Never apologize, it's great. I wanna know, because I wanna know what works for you, and that helps me become better too. So uh, that's great. If it helps with the, with the tapping, that's fantastic. It's all about progress. Mm. And Jen, great to see you here always. Thanks so much for being here. Hopefully you're working out with us. And Elizabeth, Elizabeth, is this your first time here? I'm not sure if, that, uh, if this is your first time. I don't recognize your name completely. I'm pr normally pretty good with names. But great to have you here. Thanks so much. And uh, hope you're enjoying it and joining in. Okay, next exercise we're going to do. It's going to be a little bit different now. I'm going to turn the board slightly, but all we're going to do is turn and face the side. I'm facing to my left side, so my right hand is on the pole. Take the center of my right foot, put it in the middle so the arch of the foot is over the red marker and come into here. We're just going back to basics again. Now, what I want you to do is notice my body does not move. I push with my toe, I push with my heel. And a little bit of confidence in here, knowing that the board is going to stop. It's not a dramatic rock. Don't worry, it's gonna hit the ground, and it's gonna hit the ground. And when it does, it's solid. So again, keep your knees slightly bent. We're just rocking forward and backwards. And this one is an exercise that I love to do myself, even though I feel that I have really good balance because it helps work on pressure points that we don't normally engage in, which is the heel. I can feel that heel. If I'm walking backwards or my foot hits something on the ground, I'm strengthening up my heel pressure and awareness, whereas we're used to working because we're walking forward on the inside, outside, and the toes. You'll also notice in here that pushing on the toes, you're actually strengthening to be able to then push back and rock. There you go, excellent, really good. Just working back and forward, excellent. Really like it. Hey Beth, I think I just saw you log in. Thanks so much for stopping in and saying hi. Good, and hold the middle. Now what I want you to do is find that middle and what we're doing here is finding that balance point of pressure from heel to toe. As you begin to change, you'll notice there's a very slight change in those pressure points. This is one of those things if you're walking a dog that's so important because if the dog begins to pull, or you've got to bend down and pick something up, I'm not gonna talk about what we're gonna pick up, but pick something up. Um, pressure points in the toes and heels are critical so that the dog doesn't take control or your body weight doesn't take control, you're in control. There you go, good. Now push forward, rock forward and back again. Awesome, and find that balance. And it's, it's incredible how simple it feels when we're rocking, but having to find that balance and that small minute pressure point change is so dynamic. Here we go again, last time through. Just pushing forward and back and you'll feel your calf muscles beginning to work now. And find that balance. There you go, it's much easier. You know, turn the board and look at the camera. It's much harder doing that looking to the side. If I look to the front, it's actually much easier because I'm all in alignment and I can focus on that center. When I turn my head, it's a little tougher. Okay, good. What I want you to do now is I want you to take um, your right foot, push it forward, put the left foot back. Take the right foot back, put the left foot exactly where it was. So what we're doing here is we're learning those small little steps. We've got change of body angle because with the ground changing, our body angle has to change. But just as importantly on this, we're learning that, look, as I step on my left and I begin to push, the board is moving with one foot on the board. So we're learning how to control the change of body angle with the foot on the ground, one foot on the ground, not two. There you go, good. So I'm pushing with my left heel, I push with my left toe, and you're strengthening up the ankle, the heel, the toes, the calf muscle is involved, your knee stays bent slightly, so we're strengthening the quad, because anytime the knee is bent, the quad is working. But the beautiful thing here is we're working on the brain, feeling what's happening. Good, and bring it back to the middle. Now we do the same thing, I'll just check my foot position in the middle. Same thing, I push with the left, now take the left back. And notice, most people will have one leg 
that is preferred over the other. So there's one leg that's preferred over the other. That's why this is so, again, dynamic, because we have to work on both sides of the body. You want to be even. You don't want to be lopsided where one side's stronger and one side's weak. And by doing these exercises one leg at a time, the weaker leg will become stronger, and that means the confidence goes up because you don't feel so weak anymore. There you go. We're going to go five more. One. Two. Three. Again, keep your body in the middle. Four. Never let your body go outside. Last one and bring your foot back to the middle. Now we're going to finish this one where we're just going to rock. Now, I've got a new little exercise to finish this one that nobody would have done before. I, I tried this last night and I liked it. Stand on your left foot. What we do is slide your right foot forward, slide your right foot back. And you'll notice your foot is never leaving the board but you're putting a lot of your body weight, about 95% of your body weight is on your left leg. So I'm just sliding it as if I was sliding it over ice. Now, the reason that we're doing this is some of you are living in ice. Some of you are living on, you know, inside, you can get water on the floor, it can slip. So what we're learning is we begin to slip, put the foot down. As we begin to slide, put the foot down and catch that body weight. We're gonna go one more forward and back. Good, now bring it to the middle. We're gonna do the same thing now with the left foot. So slide it forward, the foot stays on the board at all times, and at any point, you could just put it down and catch it if you wanted to. So we just slide. Now, the other thing here is we're learning how much body weight to transfer to one leg to then be able to move the other leg, but we're feeling with that proprioceptive connection that our foot is still on the board. So again, we're building that connection a feel and everything in life should be about feeling. You overthink it, you start building um, a fear. If you overthink it, you start um, losing the fluidity of movement. And so what we want to do is let the brain feel as we're going and everything comes from the feel. If you begin to feel something's different, you'll adjust. Okay, bring your foot back to the middle and just rock forward and backwards to finish. Just loosen it up and come back, push on the heels, bend the knees and step off the side of the board. Okay, I want you to get one more drink of water because we're gonna finish up now with two exercises and then we're done. The first one is a four minute workout, um, which I'm, again is a cardio workout for those of you that haven't done it and those that are good and have already done this, you can raise the level and then we finish up with one little exercise to finish. Quick drink of water. Mmm. I thought it said be Bella. Oh, Belle. Belle, lovely to see you here. Thanks so much for coming in and uh, watching this exercise in here. If you don't have a 60 up balance board, I hope that if you need balance training and strength training inside the house safely, I hope that you'll get one and join in. If you've got one, I hope you're on it. Okay, here we go. Two exercises to go. Put your feet on one and one. And all I want you to do, we're gonna start in 15 seconds. We're gonna go through this workout. We're just gonna walk nice and easy for one minute. We're gonna start this in six seconds. So just lift your foot and walk. I want soft, just touch soft on the board. Here we go, we've got one minute of walking. Good, I'm lifting my knees nice and high. This is great stamina work. If you can hold onto the poles um, a little lighter, that's good. If you wanna hold on with your thumbs, and then if you feel off balance, you can grab the pole to, to correct and do that early. Don't wait till you feel your way off balance. Just keep correcting. I could be here in a quick little correction. And for those of you that want to, you can take one hand off, but make sure those knees are lifting up nice and high. There you go, good. We've got 20 seconds to go now. 20 seconds to go. We're building the stamina of walking, moving those legs. We're loosening up the hip because obviously we're moving the hip around. We are tightening a little bit the hip flexors, but strengthening them as we go. Now, we've got five seconds. We're gonna go into a small little jog. That means your feet won't lift as high, so we're just here, just moving it side to side. Smaller little steps but you're moving those steps faster now. Your feet are moving faster. 
This really is one of my favorite exercises on here because we really engage the heart um, to increase its strength. You always want to strengthen your heart. And the way to do that is through cardio exercise where we force the heart in a, in a natural, normal human way, physiological, to beat just a little bit faster. That will get the blood pumping, gets oxygen going around the body, and it strengthens the heart to work. Now remember, as we're doing this, if you begin to feel out of breath, you need to slow down, you can walk. If you need to take a break or get some water, um, you can step off of the board and go and do that. Listen to your body. Don't do more than you feel at the highest end of your comfort zone. Okay, next one we got one minute going on here, and we're gonna run. So now we're gonna pick up the speed. Here we go. I'm now picking up the speed and moving just a little faster. My breath begins to get a little shorter. I'm working that heart really good. I'm feeling comfortable. My feet are not slamming on the ground. My feet are just nice and gently padding the floor. So again, we increase. If you want to go out for a one mile walk, but you've done these exercises, a one mile walk at a comfortable pace, you'll be so prepared for this because you train harder than you need to do. And that's what we always look to do is make sure that when you get outside, when you do stuff, you're increasing your stamina. So there's never a fear. I've heard from people, they're out on a walk and they're worried they begin to get tired and they begin to worry, can they get home? Or they have to keep stopping and taking rest. Not good in the cold weather. Okay, and come to the center. Now what I want you to do is just put your feet on one on one, make sure they're there. We're gonna balance for one minute. This now goes from a fast moving action to can I find that peace? Can I find that center? I wanna stop and look at the flowers. I wanna stop and take a photograph of the beautiful sunset and with my grandchildren i want to stop and watch them running around and just take in that moment we've got to go from the ability of moving to the ability of being relaxed and stationary and just finding that middle again the reason i do one minute of balance is the first 10 seconds normally 20 seconds we feel good by the time you get to 45 seconds you're beginning to like feel those pressure points and beginning to get a little tired with the um, with the pressure points on there. So we're strengthening up our ability to maintain balance in a stationary position. I know Bob would always say he feels good when he's um, out walking, but as soon as he has to stand still for a minute, he becomes so conscious of his balance with training. And there you have it. Bring your feet back to two and two. Let's just rock it out. We've got one more set of exercises to do. Very simple, but it's also going to be part of our cool down as well. Great job. We've had uh, about half an hour workout. Really happy with today's workout because I, if I can feel it, I know it's doing the right thing. If I don't feel it, then I'm not happy because everything is about feeling your body. And today, I could really feel the pressure points. Good, push down with your left foot, grab a quick drink of water after stepping off of the board because we just went through a cardio workout. Um, no, it's great. Uh, Beth says, when you ask students for answers, you wanted the question included in the answer. Ah, I get what you're saying in there from there, but it's all good. Um, again, this is, is fun. I totally understand. I remember when I was doing TV shows and they're asking you questions. If they said to you, how are you feeling today? I wouldn't want to just say fine. I want to say, I feel great today. You want to hope so they could edit it out and use it as well. So I totally understand what you're saying there, Beth. Okay, here we go, are you ready? All we're gonna do, put your feet very slightly apart, hold the handles and slide your hands down and stand back up again. And again, slide down and stand back up again. So what we're allowing is the hands, any point you could grip the poles and come back up again. Go down, grip the poles and come back up again. Now what I want you to do from here is take your right foot forward. I want you to push the board to the left and hold on with your left hand. I want you to slide just your right hand down and then come back up again. We're gonna do five of these, are you ready? That was just a test, here we go. Go down, slide and pull up, that's one. And down, that's two. 
and down. That's three, and you can use your left arm to pull you back up. Here, four, last one, five, and pull back up. Let's change the direction now. Take your left foot, take it back, push the board so it touches the ground. Hold on with your right hand. Now bend your knees and slide that hand down. Now if you get a little stuck, you can move your hand up and pull yourself back up again. But you're gonna slide down. Now push with that right leg and pull with the right arm. That's two, so we're here. Down, come back up, that's three. Notice my feet are apart, my left foot is behind. And down, this is strengthening the leg. Good, come back, shake the legs out. The reason we're doing this is we're working on picking something up off of the ground. I dropped my car keys, I dropped some food on the ground. Hey, Debbie, good to see you. I dropped some food on the ground and Barney isn't there to pick it up. Don't tell me Barney picks the food up because I know Debbie, he's such a well-behaved. He'll just sit there and say, Debbie, this is yours. It's the three second roll, roll, blow it off, and then you can eat it yourself, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do, push the board. What we're gonna try and do is, again, repeat what we just did, but if you want to go a little deeper and touch the board, you can. If you want to just go as far as you did, you can. Here we go. So hold on with the left hand, slide the pole down. Can I touch the board? and come back up again. We're gonna do uh, four more, here we go. One, and two. And you can look down as you go down. Three, now look up as you come back up. Last one, down, that's four. Good, push to the other side. Debbie, I've got some metal poles coming your way as well. I haven't forgotten. Push on the right side, keep that right hand on. Left hand, slide it down the pole, look, touch and up, and two, and three, and four. And if you can't get all the way down, don't worry. It's small progression, fine. You can use that pole to pull you back up again and find your balance. So that's the exercise that we did today, just to get you moving. We've got one more to go. Now, what I want you to do on this last one, it's a little tougher, so shake your legs out, and again, if you wanna just stop here and watch, that's absolutely fine, you can try it, and if it feels like it's a little too much, only go to the depth that you can. So we're gonna hold the poles at the top, I put my thumbs over the top, it gives me extra grip. I'm gonna take my right foot back, and I'm gonna bend my knee and hold on with my hands and see if I can touch that knee on the ground. Now I'm gonna push with my left leg and pull with my arms and push with my back foot and come back up. Are you ready? Let's do it again on the, the left leg forward, right leg goes back, bend both knees. I keep my weight forward, I don't lean back. My weight's forward, I go down, I feel my knee touch the ground, I come back up quickly. Let's change legs two times on the right leg now. So my left foot goes back, I go down, I tap, I pull myself back up again. I go down, I keep my weight over my front leg, over my right leg. Now I push and I pull with my arms and I'm back up again. We're gonna do it one more time each side and we're done for the day. Are you ready? Right leg goes back, go down, touch the ground, pull back up again, take the left leg back, go down, feel the knee touch ground. If you can't get to the, to the ground, don't worry, it's a slow progression and shake your legs out. And that's the end of the exercises today. So grab a quick drink of water, we're gonna go through a quick cool down and then we're on to an amazing day ahead because every day has the opportunity to be amazing. It's up to us to make it. Remember, we don't hope, we believe, and we make it happen. Okay, going in for the cool down. First thing I want you to do, take the right knee, bring it forward, keep the toes on the ground, and just roll it out. Let's loosen those ankles up. There you go, good. And change left leg. Knee forward, toes stay on the ground. Now roll that knee around. Oh, I could feel that one. Good, change again. Bring the knee forward on the right. Now take it out to in. So we just rotate the ankle just a little different direction. There you go. Now take the left knee, push it forward. Take the knee out, keep the toes on the ground and just roll it around. Three and four. Good, we're working our way up. Push the board to the right, put the ball of the foot on the, on the edge of the board and push your heel to the ground and just feel that stretch in the calf muscle. Those of you that know me, 
This is one of my favorite stretches. It feels so good along with the hamstrings as well. Good, push the board to the left, put the ball of the foot on the back edge of the board, push the heel to the ground so your foot is at this angle and then just lean forward slightly and feel that stretch on the calf muscle again. Critical, critical for, again, keeping yourself supple and strength comes from being supple, not from being tight. Good, put your right foot on one more time this side. And let me explain that one just a little bit. The tighter your muscles are, the less flexibility and movement ability they have. Change the other side, left foot on. When they're supple, they have the ability to contract and release and contract and release. And with that, you have mobility. You'll know sometimes when you wake up and you feel really stiff, you can't move, you don't feel strong, you actually feel restricted. So that's why we wanna stretch. Okay, push the board to the right now. Take your right foot, run it down the pole until your heel touches the ground. Bend the back leg slightly. You can hold onto the poles and just lean forward and feel that stretch now along your hamstring. You'll feel it in the calf a little bit as well because your toes and toes against the pole, the pole. There you go, and just lean forward. And if you want more of a stretch, try and see if you can touch your nose to your finger while you hold the pole. Not inside your nose, just the outside of your nose, just the top of your nose. Good, come back. And again, put your heel on the floor, put your toe on the edge of the pole, bend the back leg, lean forward, Begin to feel that stretch, and if you want, just bring your nose forward and touch your finger with the tip of your nose. You'll notice what you're doing is you're stretching your back forward, and that puts more of a, um, a stretch on the hamstring. If you round your back and come down, you're really stretching your back out and not your hamstring. So by leaning forward, you get more of a stretch. One thing that will help with this is get your favorite scent. So it might be strawberries or lemon and put it on the pole handle. Here we go again. And you'll want to get there and smell it. If you have sweaty hands and haven't cleaned the pole, you may not want to get this close. Oh, it feels so good. And change the other side. Oh, it feels so good. Love it. And come back. Okay. From here, what I want you to do is just kick your heels up. This is my little quad stretch, because all we're doing is by every time you lift your heel, you're elongating the thigh muscle. So we're just going through here, just allowing it to naturally move. We did some balance work today, any stepping up, stepping down, any of those kind of straight balance exercises, we're engaging the quad muscles. Now, we're gonna do one little stretch that I love, we haven't done in a while. Push the board to the left, Take your right hand, put it on your kneecap, bend forward, and now try and lift that kneecap into your, um, above your waist, and just pull with your hand on your shin bone. Good, and come back down, push to the right, put your left hand on your left knee, go down till you feel your knee, feel solid and balanced, and lift that knee up, grab your shin bone and see if you can pull that shin to you as you bring your knee up a little higher. Even if it's just a little bit, what we're doing is we're able to stretch that quad out. We'll go one more time. I'm gonna show you another way to do it just in case you're a little restricted in, in uh, how much you can bring that knee up. Touch the knee, bring it here. Now slide your hand down the shin and pull that heel a little bit up towards you. So I'm in this position here. You'll notice here we've elongated the thigh muscle. There you go. So if the knee isn't coming up, just pull that heel back. And again, go to the right. Last time, left leg. Left hand, feel the kneecap, and see if you can just slide your hand back and then just pull in here, and you've got the board to support you as you begin to feel that stretch. Good. Take your hands, release them off, roll them around. Just two times one way, two times the other. So we keep those wrists nice and supple, keep the blood moving. If you have arthritis or anything with spasticity in the wrist, we want to work in the opposite direction of where the tightness is. So if you find your hands tend to want to go in, even put them on the poles and push them down so my palms are hitting the ground, are hitting the pole, and that helps stretch out the tightness. Good, we're almost done. Roll those shoulders back, nice and easy. I want you to feel relaxed doing this. It's almost like I drop the shoulders as they come to the bottom, but I'm not forcing them down. 
It's so relaxed, loosening up the tension around the neck. Go forward into here. Whew. Good. And just shake those arms out. Take your hands in front of you. Just shake them up and down. Other way. It's like you're blowing breeze into your face. Cooling down this way. Take your hands like this. Bye bye 2020. 2021's on its way. And thanks so much for sharing that with me. So don't forget, get your water. Um, make sure you're hydrating. Thanks so much in here, Betsy. It is a great day. It's great you're here. Uh, Debbie, great to see you. I thought I saw you come on there. Um, Jen, no worries. You weren't late. I'm glad you enjoyed it. We always do the best we can with what we've given. Ah, there's Christy Paulson. I don't know if Christy's eyes sent an email to Christy last night. She is an incredible lady. I hope you're still uh, listening, Christy, because I put this in the email to you. But you're an incredible lady. Thanks for all the selfless work that you do to help so many kids. You help my nonprofit organization unbelievably. Um, and people that know Christy, she's tough. She's strong. She's so smart. But she truly looks after and helps so many kids um, you know, live the dreams they have through soccer. She works um, for the Southern California Soccer Association um, and helping kids get registered and be able to play and, and so much more than that. I can't go on. So Christy, great to see you. I hope you're still here uh, and going through there. So thanks so much. I really appreciate you being with me uh, here today. I can say love you, mum. Everyone knows you're my mum. And I uh, hope you have a great day over in England. I know it's almost in the evening now. So thanks so much for everybody for being here. You're all invaluable. And I wish you, because I won't see you. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to see you Thursday. This is the last Tuesday class. So uh, New Year's Eve Thursday, I will be back here at 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Kathy is tomorrow at uh, 9 Pacific Standard Time as well, Wednesday. That'll be her last class of the year. Then I'm here. And then I don't know if Debbie's doing a class on New Year's morning or whether she'll delay that and do it another time. Um, but I'll be reaching out, wishing you all a happy new year. Thanks so much for being part of my past year. It's been an incredible year. I really, um, really uh, appreciate it so much. Um, I just got a message here, Chad, real tightness in those toes and balls of the feet. Um, Chad, if that's the case, what I strongly recommend, and it's great that you're saying that, um, is get on a chair, take the red ball off of the front of the board, put it on the ground, so the ball's on the ground, and just sit there and roll those feet out. You'll feel the pressure points that are in there. Hey, Malcolm, you're here. That's my dad. Um, I didn't know you were here, uh, Malcolm. So happy new year to you. Malcolm is my father. You can see from his last name, um, Malcolm Metcalf over in England. So I hadn't... Uh, I didn't know you were in here today, Dad. I hope you got to follow the workout and great to see you here and Happy New Year as well. Wish you the best in England. Um, look forward to seeing you hopefully sometime soon. But Chad, yeah, if you take that and just put the ball and just sit, you know, one foot obviously on the ball, one foot's on the ground and just roll it. Don't even put too much pressure, but those little, um, what are they called? Uh, pressure point uh, nodules that are on there will help increase the blood flow to them as well because there's specific pressure points. And again, you don't have to press hard. You can just move your foot around. So hopefully that will really help. Uh, <laughs> Denise, swell workout. What's a swell? I hope you didn't swell up. Um, I hope it was a good workout. Um, I will see you on 1231 and I will be probably in Arizona on 1231. Definitely on January 1st, I'll be there. Uh, I think I'm heading to Tempe for a couple of days. So anyway... Um, have a rainbow day. Have a beautiful day. Um, hopefully it's not a rainbow. Hopefully it's sun and the rain's gone away. We had crazy storms and weather the last few days. So um, thanks so much. Wishing you the best as well. Wishing everybody the best week ahead. And I will see you January 31st, New Year's Eve. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dad. Thanks for saying hi. Talk soon. Bye-bye.